we all know love's like quite a powerful motivator of human behavior. So this has led neuroscientists to ponder sort of what chemicals might act on our brains and produce love-related behaviors. So two chemicals that have been implicated in uh, love-related behaviors of attachment and bonding are oxytocin and vasopressin, hormones which have quite a few different roles around the body, but we're more interested in how they work on the brain. So the bonding has been studied particularly in voles. Two species of voles both have oxytocin and vasopressin receptors in their brains, but the two different species of voles have very different love-related behaviors. One species, the prairie voles are monogamous. They look, once they've mated, they stay together and look after the babies. And their other species, meadow voles, are promiscuous, solitary, and they just one of them brings up the babies on their own. So, what's the difference <laughs> between the, how the chemicals work on these brains? We've got the prairie vole seems to have a higher density of oxytocin and vasopressin receptors in their brains, whilst the meadow voles, the promiscuous ones, have less receptors for oxytocin and vasopressin. So, the monogamous prairie voles, lots of vasopressin receptors in their brains, the um, promiscuous meadow voles, not so many vasopressin receptors in their brains. So it seems to suggest vasopressin and oxytocin are telling the voles whether they should be monogamous or promiscuous. So enjoy scientists want to take it a little bit further and do some experiments on the voles, some kind of more invasive experiments. So they take the happy monogamous prairie voles with their happy family block their vasopressin release and what happens? There is no more happy family of voles. It's split up, it's very sad. Okay, and um, there we go. It's all ruined. So okay, then they took the um, promiscuous meadow voles, give them more vasopressin receptors in their brains, just done by using a virus to alter gene expression. And guess what? They reduced their promiscuous behavior and became more monogamous. So just to clarify things, they took their happy monogamous prairie voles again and gave them even more vasopressin receptors in their brains. What happened? They formed their couples and they didn't even bother to have sex beforehand. <laughs> so it's, it's really led to the conclusion that more vasopressin, more oxytocin means more monogamous behavior. When oxy oxytocin seems to be more important in the female voles rather than the males. So you may be wondering, how does it apply to humans? You know, would it be people who cheat on their partners, are they going to have a reduced density of oxytocin and vasopressin receptors in their brains? Are monogamous people going to have more oxytocin and vasopressin? Well, it's probably not going to be that simple, because we've got more complicated than brains than voles, and there's a lot of different impact on love-related behaviors in humans, but fMRI brain imaging studies did show that on the left are the people in love, couples who have just fallen in love, and uh, did the active regions which have been activated more highly in their brains did have high densities of oxytocin and vasopressin receptors, which was quite interesting. And neuroscientists have done lots of other research on neurobiology of love as well, and there's a few other chemicals implicated. So, a couple of references if you want. Feeling romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much.